In Modesto, California, education was on the wrong track. You don't teach about a rainforest when the kid doesn't even know about the vacant lot across the street. So they threw out the old ways and built a radical new kind of school. One that looks different, runs differently, and is making a difference in the lives of students. It really makes me feel more better about myself. An inside look at a restructured school on this episode of Teacher TV. Well, what you're saying is you're seeing, uh, you're seeing hopeless, hopeless people, hopeless situations. The next thing after this is living under a bridge. And we have kids living under a bridge. Chuck Vidal knows the mean streets of Modesto, California. He's out here every day looking for his students. We've had two murders in, uh, that uh, happened over vacations, you know, hanging out with uh, the wrong group, being part of a gang or trying to get out of a gang. Vidal is the principal of Evelyn Hanshaw Middle School, and these are the neighborhoods that surround that school. Nestled in the San Joaquin Valley, two hours southeast of San Francisco, Modesto is largely an agricultural community, hard hit by the recession. It's a 16.4% uh, unemployment rate in Stanislaus County. Uh, it's all very much seasonal, seasonal work. So when the canneries aren't operating or when there aren't crops to pick, people are unemployment and just barely sustaining themselves. Future Hanshaw Middle School Titans, only hope for this group. Vidal says these are the students our educational system often writes off. Largely Hispanic, over half of them will never graduate from high school. And he wanted to find out why. As part of a research project, he started knocking on doors to find the answers. That was three years ago. What's your biggest concern as a parent? Um, the gangs right now. It's just ha being afraid of him falling into a gang. What do you think your child needs from school? Um, he needs a little bit more self-esteem. What these kids needed was a school that was designed for them, one that was safe, that would teach them information relevant to their lives and give them a vision of what they could become, college graduates. Now, I have a 78% Hispanic population, and I am not in this profession to to nurture and raise landscapers and car washers and housekeepers. I mean, our brains at this school are just as good as any other brain. Good morning, citizens. Welcome to Hanshaw Middle School. Welcome to a new day to be your personal best in your school community. Hanshaw combines the most at-risk students and the best teachers in the district to form a restructured school, one of the most exciting in the nation. The state of California is in a position where we have to start graduating more kids than we do. We have to, st we have to. And so it's not even a question of saying, well, let's try this for a couple years. It's a question of saying, we have to do something. These are the men and women that make it all happen, the teachers. What power is that? I can't figure it out. Some were transferred here. Others were recruited, like Robert Ransom, Technology Teacher of the Year who took an $8,000 pay cut to teach these students. Before coming here, Barbara Hickman was the director of a museum. While the school may be only two years old, these professionals are committed to the long term. I had a chance to teach English and social studies at the same time to the same people, which meant that I could slow the assembly line down a little bit and I could build a Mercedes instead of just an econo box. I, uh, I talked to the teacher, and he's cleared up on that tardy, so he's okay. Hanshaw was designed to provide a safe environment. Terrific, thanks. It's built in a circle with a central courtyard, so it's easy to keep an eye on the students and unwanted outsiders. When gates are not in use, they're locked. Fences weren't built to keep the kids in, but the gang's out. The Salvation Army is down the block. Across the street, there are roosters for sale. The school is broken down into seven houses, each named after a California state university. The teachers are called community leaders and the students, citizens. There are 60 to 100 citizens in each house. There's a school motto and a school handshake. Now, what are you doing when you do this? You're that taking a diploma. You're taking your diploma on June 10th, 1993, right? right? Their symbol is the Titan. There's even a school song. I am but a small There are no second-class citizens here. Decisions are made by everyone, students and parents. 
teachers design their own curriculum in team meetings. We're, we're being pushed to, to, to do a little bit more and to share and to compromise more. And uh, there's some real, uh, you know, real struggles that go on there, um, but that's part of the community building. In the classrooms, you'll see plenty of cooperative learning. There are no desks, just tables. And you won't see many textbooks, but there are plenty of computers. This is not traditional teaching. Curriculum is always evolving, fitting the needs of these kids. You teach a lot less, and you teach it in more depth. And you don't teach about a rainforest when the kid doesn't even know about the vacant lot across the street. The test of an educator is how you move the low end. But what happens if we don't? What if our educational system keeps failing these students? What do we lose? We lose scientists, we lose doctors, we lose teachers, we lose good parents, um, we lose uh, citizens that, that are valuable. Hanshaw Middle School is at the forefront of a revolution in education. No matter what happens to you in your life, you have to understand nothing will change the fact that we care for you here at Hanshaw. What began as a dream is now the vision of 39 teachers and 870 students to stay in school, to go to college, to dream a dream. And to make that dream real, they take their kids to college. I'm the first one out of six, six of my brothers to come to college. And three of my, three of my older brothers are dropouts. Hanshaw students listen carefully as this college student delivers a message they all understand. I mean, you know how our parents say, trabajar como burro? It's true. You know, you go out there to the fields. I've been out there to the fields. And I tell you, it's hard, man. The students are on a field trip to Stanislaus College, about 10 miles from school. Once a year, Hanshaw students visit the college for which their house is named. It lets them see themselves as college graduates. I want to put our, our children on a, on a path to, you know, on a path to college. I want them to see themselves as collegians. We want you to see yourself, you know, on the lawn here studying for your next class. We want to see yourself in a student union, you know, having lunch. We want you to see yourself in a large lecture hall or in these laboratories. Without this kind of exposure and support, many of these kids might only see the limitations of poverty. At a college visit, they find people like themselves succeeding. I have a master's degree, I have a bachelor's degree in sociology, and guess what? I'm a high school dropout. I thought it was funny when I was 16 years old, and I thought I was cool until I landed my first job washing dishes, and I washed dishes for three years. So those of you who are looking forward to dropping out, I feel sorry for you. To reinforce the vision of higher education at Hanshaw, there's a college pennant or banner in every classroom. Wearing college sweatshirts and jackets is encouraged. Sports team attire, often associated with area gangs, is banned. And little by little, the idea of a life beyond built-in barriers is setting in. I'm going to go to Downey High School, and then I want to go to St. Mary's College. I want to go to college first and take architecture. I want to go to San Francisco State and learn how to, learn to be a doctor. School officials know not all of their 7th and 8th graders will make it to higher education, but now they have real role models to encourage them. Go to a university. Reap the benefits of what this country has to offer. Live your parents' dreams. Don't let them down, and don't let yourself down. Coming up, what really makes this school run? Find out next on Teacher TV. At Hanshaw Middle School, kids have a say in how the school is run. Teachers wanted feedback from students to improve their teaching styles. So they asked them, what bothers you most about teachers? They came up with a list. And boy, was it a list. <laughs> I know, they thought maybe, you know, a few comments or something. It's like the Dead Sea Scrolls here. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, speaks in a monotone and bores the class to death. Class, here's a short film strip on the history of corduroy. <sighs> Oh, expects uh, instant digestion in the brain. Okay, got it. Uh, on to the next book. Uh, got it. Okay, now flashcards. Uh, got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, wait, wait, wait. It says stares over your back and never says anything. Oh, I hate that. Or that awful feeling they give you when they look at you, or even worse, <laughs> through you with the x-ray eyes. <laughs> Turning class into boot camp. I'm your teacher. Here's a quiz. Tell me what the answer is. Square root of pi. I don't know. <laughs> that was only five of them. You want to hear the other 45? I don't know if I can take it today. <laughs> I'm an important 
important person. I am an important person. Students in Brad Stewart's Teen Issues class recite this pledge each morning. I will be my personal best today, tomorrow, and every day. And in Cheryl Jenkins' English class, students have a daily ritual that finishes with a bang. Today I will focus on the rewards of success and not the penalties of failure. On June 10, 1993, I will graduate from Hanshaw Middle School. Sonoma! Hanshaw students are grouped into houses named for state colleges. Each house designs a routine like this that reinforces goals and gives them a much-needed sense of belonging. They're more um, enthusiastic about school this way. I really feel that they, they're, they're getting more uh, confidence. They feel that this is their school. The seven houses of Hanshaw Middle School are designed to ease students' transition from the self-contained environment of elementary school to the varied class schedule of high school. For seventh graders, core classes last 88 minutes, more like the classes they had in elementary school. But for eighth graders, classes are only 44 minutes to prepare them for the shorter class periods of high school. In each house, two core teachers teach an interdisciplinary curriculum. One teaches science and math, the other language arts and social studies. A core teacher serves as team leader, with specialty teachers rounding out the staff. House members collaborate to decide curriculum, tie subjects together, and make learning more meaningful. These teachers from San Jose House are experimenting with a new curriculum for their students. They're spending the day at the local utility company. The Modesto Irrigation District has designed a school curriculum that teaches water awareness and conservation. It's called Every Drop Counts. We're in the middle of a water crisis, and the more we know about water, I think the better off we're going to be. If the Hanshaw teachers like what they learn here, they may decide to teach the program. And at Hanshaw, it's their decision. But, but we know, you know, the students that we're working with, and of course, you know, we're aware of the, their needs. And so we, we put the curriculum together based on that. We are, we're, the, we're the bottom line. We make the decisions on, on the things that are going to be taught in the classroom. Let's review our, our, the consensus we have on the three major concepts that we want every student to learn and be able to apply at the, at the conclusion of this particular unit on water. The next day, the same teachers meet at school. They decide to proceed with every drop counts. Now they need to work out ways to meet state standards and customize the course. The first concept would be where does water come from, because that's a very important issue. Two, the history of water development. And three, the social political aspects of changing the environment and the water development of the Tuolumne. That sounds boring to me. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if I was to present that to the no, kids, no, they go, no, 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 you The group doesn't always see eye to eye. But at Hanshaw, putting your opinion on the line is what's expected. We're risk takers. And if, if you're not, there's no reason not to be. There's no one holding anyone back here to try new things to be creative, to develop a program. Later in the day, the teachers keep working on the water program at the nearby Tuolumne River. The water company has paid for substitute teachers so this group can brainstorm. You know, they come here to swim and they come here to just hang around? Or they catch the fish and catch the tap. Many students live along the river's banks. All agree, including it will help the water curriculum flow. Lots of times, we're the only constant thing in their life. So being able to work with the curriculum and create the curriculum to meet their needs is extraordinary. It's wonderful. It's, it's what's happening. See, that's the part that makes it fun for teachers. Yeah. Like, this is my curriculum. We selected that this is our curriculum, and this is how it makes us excited again. Next decision you're going to make is probably the most difficult decision. Students also have the power to make decisions at Hanshaw. Groups in Patty Simmons's class are selecting a country on which to do a project. Then they pick a job to perform during the project. Ruben, you're the reporter. Can you tell me what country your group has decided on? We pick Mexico. You pick Mexico. Okay, all four of you have agreed? Yeah. And Yanni, you have agreed? Okay, great. If you can instill them that they do have choices, then they can go out and make decisions. Well, maybe this is what I want to do, and this is how I can go about it. Can I see your Renaissance card? Hanshaw students chose to implement an incentive program called Renaissance, which they run. Improving grades or attendance earns you special identification and privileges. Many kids say the best benefit is the express line at lunch. Others say being recognized feels good. I, I want to do this for myself, but when you got other people, like McDonald's saying, here, have a free drink since you did good, it really makes me feel more better about myself. 
These 7th and 8th graders are working on ways to get more students involved with Renaissance. You know, like school spirit or something like that, somebody who has a lot of enthusiasm, you know, somebody who, you know, always helping people. Faculty will help them implement their ideas, but it is the students who decide what works. These kids help design a Renaissance program, and now they see it all over the school, and they feel proud. More than 40% of Hanshaw students have earned Renaissance cards. Now school officials are setting their sights on parents. Many lack a formal education and have never been asked to participate in their child's education. Sometimes as parents it's hard because um, we need guidance on how to help. I know. But I now a small group of moms and dads has joined students and faculty for regular meetings at school. A child who has a parent that's involved in the decision making and around the campus a lot, um, you know, they can excel and they, it makes a difference on some students that might be at risk and some that aren't. Up next, an inside look at relevant learning when Teacher TV continues. Are you letting too many people in? This is what a classroom sounds like at Hanshaw Middle School. They are more Kids don't sit at desks, they work together. Okay, let everybody in your group see. This is cooperative learning. In uh, building a cell, each group of students took an organelle from inside of the cell and they researched that as reason for building this is to give the students uh, an experience that they can walk into, they can touch, and they can feel. Cooperative learning is especially important to these kids. Many have limited English, so teachers spend little time lecturing. Students with mixed ability levels work within the same group. Those students uh, aren't as they aren't academically familiar with the language, so a lot of them need to pick things up, look at them. They need to hold them in their hands. They need to talk about them. Here, relevant learning is the norm. We've been doing recyclings for our school. We're doing a recycling can project for Hayward House, and now we're doing a whole school-wide recycling project. Counting cans combines market research with math. We take the numbers back into the classroom and we do percentages of Pepsi versus Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi versus Orange Fresh. They graph those in three different graphs. Making a graph from something that you have personally done is certainly more meaningful than reading a graph in a newspaper. That's math class. As part of science, they learn about marketing skills. And then we, we go and pull the ads and we figure out who's marketing to whom and how that works with kids this age. So this is part of our um, hope to help our kids be better consumers. This is what you're buying, this is how they're selling it. And this is another kind of relevant learning. This class is set up like a business. One of the primary focuses of this class is to develop a good work ethic. No, if you want to make your own, if you want to make your own design, that would be the way to do it. Here there's an employer-employee relationship. These seventh graders earn points for attendance and quality of work. If they don't perform, they're fired and lose points. And these points contribute to the overall grade. It's a very difficult thing to do, but if you use a business-type system in your classroom, uh, it addresses itself to what they need in their real world when they go out into work. This technology class integrates thematic instruction from math and science classes. At the same time, it provides real-life skills. Business cards, what they're doing is making some decisions upon a lot of different careers that they might be interested in. It's, as far as in the cartoon instruction uh, goes, they're getting uh, experience in graphic arts. Just a lot of very different areas that they can select as a career. The goal of cooperative and relevant learning is to engage and challenge the students. And teachers have scheduled planning time every day to design the curriculum. It is like having two full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. And people come to visit our school all the time, and they say, oh, we want to get this program. How do you guys do this? And we say, we have eight meetings a week. We learn that because you disagree doesn't mean you stop the production line. You keep going. You keep going, mm -hmm. you know. And I think more than learning to disagree, I've learned to compromise. Mm -hmm. While Henshaw may provide a more professionally challenging environment for its teachers, critics often point to test scores as the final judge of their success. Even so, the 7th and 8th graders scored higher than their grade levels on the California Test of Basic Skills. Average daily attendance is remarkable, 98%. And that's with the nation's most at-risk group of students. Everybody treats you with respect here, and they, they, you're not just somebody, you're not nobody here, you're a citizen. The goal of Hanshaw Middle School is to prepare these students for the 21st century. That takes innovation, dedication, and cooperation.
It would be difficult for another school in some other part of the country to say, hey, we're going to do that. Because <laughs> if the administration and your school board didn't want you to do it, you couldn't. Restructuring for the sake of restructuring is wrong. You know, what you have to look at is, you know, if the schools in your community are working, then you stick with it. You don't change something that doesn't need to be fixed. But uh, looking at, again, the profile of our, our children, the system that was serving them was disserving them. Teachers here at Hanshaw are proud of their kids. They say this kind of learning is not a fad. It's the future of education. America can't afford to neglect this generation of children the way they did their parents. That's why Chuck Vidal is not about to give up. Even now, he's out recruiting the next generation of Titans. Well, we have a seat with your name on it. There's a seat with your name on it waiting for you in three years. For more information about what you've seen on our show, call us toll-free. Our number is 1-800-229-4200. Call during business hours between 9 and 4.30 Eastern, Monday through Friday. 1-800-229-4200. Listen, fine viewers, and you shall hear the amazing story of the human ear as the Learning Channel takes off for Beekman's World. Next. <laughs>